Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. I'd like to do a mail day video because I've been getting a lot of very cool stuff in the mail in the last week or so. And uh, records, books, all sorts of cool stuff. So here's what I got today, right? From Shout Factory, I got this limited edition 1985 sort of a neo-noir, I think, because it's been a while since I've seen it. 1985 Trouble in Mind, directed by Alan Rudolph. I haven't seen this movie since it came out in 1985, so there are many things I don't remember, but I remember having a great time watching it. Great cast of actors. We have Chris Christopherson, Keith Carradine, Laurie Singer, George um, Kirby, jean vive Bujold, Joe Morton, and last but not least, Divine. That's right, the original drag queen, Divine playing a character not in drag. So uh, one of the things I do remember is that Divine stood out. He plays a character named Hilly Blue. Hilly Blue. Yeah, some sort of a gangster or something, but he's not dressed up in, in drag. And uh, Keith, Her Keith Carradine was wild, as I remember it. So has anybody seen this? It seems to be an adventure. See if I like it as much as I did back in 85, OK? And uh, I also got a record in the mail that I want to show you. Now, here where I live in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, we have a community radio station. It's called WEFT-FM. Totally listener-supported, and they play an eclectic mix of music, everything from uh, classical music, bluegrass, blues and jazz and rock and roll, industrial music, early in, in the morning hours, about three or four in the morning, you can turn on the radio if you have insomnia and hear industrial music. And five mornings a week from 9 a.m. until 11.30, they play jazz. So I wake up to jazz several days a week when I'm not sleeping until noon. <laughs> so about a week or so ago, maybe longer than that, I, I woke up to this incredible music. I had no idea what I was listening to. And uh, it, it really got my attention. So I waited to hear what, hear the guy tell us what it was. It was from this record. It's called London Brew, okay? And what this is, I just opened this up a while ago, so I haven't read the liner notes, haven't listened to any of it, so I don't even know what the names of the, the songs are. But it is a dedication to the classic album from Miles Davis called Bitches Brew, which I um, only heard for the first time maybe last year. I finally got around to buying a reissue of that incredible two record set. It's just fantastic music. So I heard this on the radio and I just thought I would check it out. Uh, anybody know about London Brew? I don't even know if it's a group that does, you know, series of series of records. I really have no idea. But this is going to be this is going to be interesting to get into, right? So it's been a while since I picked up a new record. That's kind of cool. Um, also, a couple of days ago, well, not a couple of days ago, last week or something, they had a, a one-day Criterion Collection Barnes & Noble 30% off sale. Or no, I guess it wasn't Barnes & Noble. It was just at the Criterion website. So I wanted to pick this up. Chilly Scenes of Winter, a, a, a film from 1979, which I've never seen. And uh, my friend Roger Kirby was talking about this in one of his videos, and I was very intrigued by it. And so I decided to pick it up and watched it a couple of nights ago. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It's one of the quirkiest love stories you'll ever hope to see. And I don't even remember this movie being out. It just, it must have, I guess it came and went very quickly. But uh, I'm, I'm glad that it's getting some attention now. Directed by Joan Micklin Silver, and it stars John Hurd and Mary Beth Hurt, okay? And Griffin Dunn is also in it, a small part. Gloria Graham, the famous actress, is uh, has a supporting role. She's, of course, Gloria Graham is always fascinating. And at this time in her life, you know, she was, uh, well, a very complicated lady, but it's great to see her in this. And uh, I like this film very much. There, there's a... Uh, I guess she, the director, it didn't do very well on its first release, and then a few years down the road, she had a chance to re-edit the film, and she changed the ending. 
So the and also change the title. The title was originally called, oh boy, Head Over Heels, right? And she changed it to uh, Chilly Scenes of Winter. And uh, the the ending that she changed to, I think, is much better. But uh, Mary Beth Hurt, good actress. I've only seen her in a couple of things. She was in one of my favorite films, which is Woody Allen's Interiors, and I love that film very much. But the character she played in that was so, to me, irritating and unlikable. I actually did a video all about my my personal feelings of interiors and especially that character. But in this film, uh, she's thoroughly likable, even though the character she plays is uh, incredibly complicated and not exactly a likable character. But then John Hurd, his character is also very, very obsessive. I wouldn't, I'm not even sure I would call this a love story. It's more about obsession than it is love. But uh, highly recommend it. Thoroughly enjoy this. Okay, I also picked up a book from creepyclassics.com. This is a hardback edition of a 1978 book by Calvin Thomas Beck, the author of Heroes of the Horrors. This is called Scream Queens, Heroines of the Horrors. And of course, my reason for buying it is uh, this lady right on the cover here, Barbara Steele. And... In 1978, when I picked this book up in paperback, which I've had all these years and it's falling apart, which is why I decided to get the new edition, is um, in 1978, when I found this book, I really knew very little about Barbara Steele. I had seen a handful of her films, and I just didn't know that much about her, really. So this opened my eyes up to how extensive her career was, had many, many quotes from her interviews, and a lot of information about her and uh, so yeah, I this was a this was a godsend for me, and uh, it also has interesting collection of of people. Um, only only a couple of people from the Hammer films, Martine Beswick and um, Hazel Court. But other than that, it, it it ignores the Hammer films. I don't know why that is. I mean, this was 1978, so there were a lot of women they could have uh, covered in the Hammer films. But it also has Bridget Helm from Metropolis, Faye Ray, um, Elsa Lanchester, Joan Crawford and Betty Davis, um, Yvette Vickers, that's kind of cool. So Faith Demurg, uh, Vampira. So yeah, a lot of fun. And I'm going to give this to a friend of mine. In about a week, in a week and a half, I'll be going to the Monster Bash Conference in Pennsylvania, and I'm going to give this to uh, a friend that I plan to meet up there so he can uh, so he can increase his knowledge of Barbara Steele, which is something you all should be doing. I'll just put that out there. And finally, let me show you what I got from one of my favorite online sellers, a guy named DVDR Party. DVDRparty.com. I think I've talked about him before in other videos, but I, I frequently buy stuff from this guy. He sells a lot of obscure films, uh, public domain films, foreign films, and, and, and the occasional bootleg a little bit. Um, so I picked up this film called Vinyl, which of course a lot of the record collectors here on YouTube will know about. This is actually available on YouTube. I, I think it's, um, I've seen it in various parts. It's not all just one video. Maybe, maybe now there is one video on YouTube. But this is all about a collection of people who collect records. I mean, really fanatical knowledgeable and dedicated record collectors. They're all fascinating people. Made by a guy named Alan Zwig, or Zwig. And he, interesting guy himself, he, he does this sort of as, as a therapeutic thing for himself dealing with what he considers to be his own obsession with collecting records, collecting music, and how it's affected his life. And uh, it's some of the things he says about himself and about record collecting are not necessarily happy and positive, but it's still fascinating. And all the people he talks to, some, some old friends and all that, they're just really fascinating people. So anyway, this is a two-disc set, very good imagery, has the original, the original release and the alternate tape, which I have not yet watched. So I think that's probably a little bit different. So. For also from DVDR Party, I got uh, a couple of Roger Corman films that I have never seen before. And one is called Rock All Night, and the other is called Sorority Girl, late 1950s. 
Now, with this movie and, and the cover, you would think it's all about rock and roll. And it does have rock and roll in it. It has the platters forming on stage, which is really nice to see. But actually, it's a very serious film based on a television play, which was very serious. And Dick Miller is in it. We have uh, Abby Dalton. We have Gene Cooper from The Young and the Restless. The heavy, one of the heavies is played by um, Russell Johnson from Gilligan's Island. Ed Nelson is in it. A uh, very cool little movie, okay? And this one's called Sorority Girl, starring a woman named Susan Cabot, an actress that people like me are aware of. She was in um, other Corman films like um, The Wasp Woman, and she was also in a film called Carnival Rock, another rock and roll film. Very beautiful and talented actress. And this is a this is a, not a lighthearted film. She plays a very complicated and destructive character destructive not only to other people but also self-destructive and uh, kind of over the top but interesting to watch. I also got a couple of things that DVDR Party sent as extras. He always sends extras and one way, one thing is called um, Rock and Roll Rumble. This is a collection of trailers, a compilation of teen angst and rock and roll trailers which he bootlegged from Something Weird video but um, I'm glad to have this anyway. Oh, I also sent away for another movie. Where did he did he put this as an extra? I can't remember now, but this is another teen angst movie called Runaway Daughters. Okay, also from 1956. And the actress you see on the back here is, is named Gloria Castillo, who was in The Night of the Hunter. I think that was her first film. She was also in a reform school girl and um, Invasion of the Saucer Men which if you like 50 sci-fi and and teen angst you will certainly have heard of those but a uh, very very fun movie about three teenage girls who having big trouble with their parents so they just get in all kinds of dramatic messes and it's a lot of fun and he always sends me other extras uh, dvd samplers okay showing what else he has to sell and he threw in Oh, this is always this is fun. A couple of 3D glasses, which I were to have some of these. He he sells a lot of things on 3D. I didn't buy anything this time, but he sent me these anyway. And finally, now this is really weird. He sent me this two CD set, Kmart reel to reel store music from 1974. Music you would hear shopping at Kmart during the Christmas season. How weird is that? on scotch tape hmm? so <laughs> this would make nice background music kind of washing dishes I guess I don't know. so anyway so that's my mail day and I hope you like some of this stuff and I will talk to you soon comments are welcome